Along with the external beauty, of course our Prophet ﷺ was blessed with internal beauty. And he was blessed with humility. And he was blessed with modesty. And of his modesty, and of his simple lifestyle, and we all know the story of the Prophet Wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar, the famous story reported in Tirmidhi, that Umar ibn al-Khattab did not have anything to eat. And so once Umar ibn al-Khattab is walking in the streets, and he sees the Prophet Wasallam sitting, and this is at noon, and at noon, nobody walks in the streets in the summertime. It's too hot. So he says to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, what are you doing outside? And the Prophet ﷺ knows that Umar is outside for one reason. And that is he doesn't have food at home. So he says the same reason as you. Same reason as you. I mean, I'm just sitting outside, there's nothing to eat at home. And as they're sitting there, Abu Bakr as well is walking. Because you cannot sit at home and you're hungry, you just want to walk around, just go outside. And the three of them, the three of them are sitting there just talking when one of the Sahaba, Abu Haytham, is rushing back to work, to home from work. So he finishes his story, he's rushing home. So he says, Ya Rasulullah, what are you three doing at this time of the day? And so Umar says, well, we didn't have anything to eat, so we're just sitting here basically talking, you know. So Abu Haytham says, La, this is not possible. This is not possible. That the three best people now you're sitting here. So he tells, he knows that he has a goat, an old goat at home. So he tells them, come to my house and I'll give you food. I will prepare food for you. Come to my house. So he rushes home. He only has one goat that is past the age of giving milk. It's an old goat. So he tells his wife, by Allah, we need to sacrifice this goat. We need to get rid of the goat. And you cook the food. I will knead the dough. We're going to make some bread. So we will give him meat and bread. And so the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Umar, they came and they ate meat and bread, which is of course the, the uh, luxurious food item of that time and to this day. And then what was the response of the Prophet ﷺ when he finished all of this? After not having anything at home, he reminded Abu Bakr and Umar. He reminded them that they left their houses hungry. And Allah gave them this meal. Ya Abu Bakr and Umar, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ Allah is going to ask you on that day about this food. What did you do with it? And did you thank me enough for it? SubhanAllah, I mean, Wallahi, one of us, yani we, three, ta- three meals a day, we don't even think about Allah's blessings, right? And, and the Prophet is so conscious that Allah is going to ask you about this na'im. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُ You're going to be asked about this blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And as for his humility, Anas ibn Malik, he says that I served the Prophet ﷺ for 10 years. I served him. I didn't just visit him. I lived with him for 10 years. And not once did he rebuke me. Not once did the word uff come from his mouth. Now uff, as you know, is the least word to express irritation. It's not even a word of anger. It's not a word of... It's the word to express irritation. It's like... Just like that. Like that. It's just that is the equivalent of uff. And the Prophet ﷺ never, ever said the word uff. And Anas said, he never said to me, why did you do this? And he never said to me, why did you not do that? And subhanAllah, as they say, by how a person treats his family, you know him. By a person's treatment of his inner circle, that's how you know him. What? side we show to our family, to our spouses, to our children, that is the real us. It's easy to be somebody else in the masjid. It's easy to be somebody else in the workplace. But who you are in front of your wife, in front of your kids, that is the real you. And Anas ibn Malik is saying, for 10 years, I never heard the word uff come from his mouth. That is the perfection of his manners. And all of the jokes of the Prophet ﷺ, they are pure. And they are clean. And they are truthful. Even his jokes are true. Even when he caused people to laugh, it is something that is true. And there are many instances of this. And of the instances is an old lady coming to the Prophet ﷺ. An old lady coming to the Prophet ﷺ saying, O Messenger of Allah, make dua that Allah causes me to enter Jannah. And she's an old lady, wizened, you can tell, like, you know, 70 years old, very old lady. So the Prophet ﷺ looked at her and said, Oh my aunt, haven't you been informed that old ladies cannot enter Jannah? Didn't you study theology? I mean, don't you know? Old ladies cannot enter Jannah. 
And she begins wailing and crying, and what am I going to do now? And then he told her that, don't cry, don't cry. For wallahi, all ladies cannot enter Jannah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make her into a young fair maiden and then she will enter Jannah. It's a joke. She was supposed to be like, you know, give her glad tidings. Is that you're not going to be an old lady when you enter Jannah. You're going to be a young. You're going to go back to your, 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 your days as a lovely maiden. That's how you will enter Jannah. And then he recited the verse, Inna ansha'na hunna insha'a. It's that we bring them forth with a new beginning. We conclude by... Mentioning a beautiful hadith in Bukhari that Anas ibn Malik narrates when he says that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, "O Messenger of Allah, when is the day of judgment? Mata sa'a?" And this is a question that has no benefit and it's not going to gain you anything. And the Prophet sallallahu doesn't know when is the day of judgment, so he said, in, 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 instead of saying I don't know, instead of saying what do you care, he asked him. He directed him to a more pertinent question. He said, "What have you prepared for it when it comes?" Instead of asking, when is the day of judgment? What have you prepared for it? And so, the man was silent for a while. It completely jolted his perspective, right? And this shows us, when somebody comes and asks you a foolish question, don't make fun of him. Don't make him feel... Direct him to something more pertinent, more useful. And so the man was completely shocked. He remained silent. And then, he spoke and he said, I really don't have that much salah, and that much siyam, and that much sadaqah. وَلَكِنِّي أُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ But I have a genuine love of Allah and His Messenger. So the Prophet wasallam said, The man shall be with he whom he loves. Download our mobile applications or register on our official website to get access to exclusive content. Links given in description of video.